The Lord be with you. You guys make me nervous when you're quiet before church starts. So let's try that again. The Lord be with you. Much better. Happy Easter. It is a delight that we have this opportunity to gather and to celebrate uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. So whether you're worshiping at home or worshiping in here, we have much joy in our hearts today. We begin by acknowledging that the land we worship on is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee people. We also honor the heritage and gift of Métis people. May our actions be guided by our commitment to reconciliation. We are in for another exciting treat this morning. So I invite you to please stand and sing it with gusto, Jesus Christ is risen today. I think that deserves a well done. Woohoo! Yay! It is such a delight to hear that organ sing. So thank you. Thank you. I know you put a lot of work into getting that ready. So thank you very much. As I said, it's always a, a treat to hear the organ sing. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! May his grace and peace be with you. Can I have the kids to the front? Some of them are getting bigger. <laughs> Laugh to see some of our adults wearing their Easter hats. 
they're, they're not quite the bonnets we used to grow up with, some of us, but still fun to see some, some smiles, some smiles. So what Easter traditions do you have around your house? Do you have anything special you do every year? Come to church, yeah. Come to church, and then at home, we, my parents like set up a little Easter hunt. Easter hunt. Yeah. Are there clues, or do you just have to go looking? I just got to go looking, and they um, tell us where they if are. If you're getting closer, yeah. yeah. Great. And what Easter traditions do you have? Any, any at your house? Um, egg hunts and dinner with family. Egg hunts and dinner with family. Yeah, we could never do an egg hunt at my house because when my son was little, we also had Jack Russells who could get into anything and everything, so couldn't really hide eggs at our house. But that's okay. But again, family, church, lots of ways to celebrate because it's funny because at Christmas we come and we celebrate the birth of Jesus and there's gifts and there's presents and there's family and some of the same traditions. There we got, we were... We're excited because we were given something, the gift of the baby Jesus in the, in the manger. And here, we're excited because it's empty. We don't usually get accept, excited when it... Would you be excited if you opened up a birthday present and the box was empty? No, 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 no. We can be honest. We can be honest. Just us girls, we can be honest. Uh, we wouldn't be that excited. Neither would our parents probably be very excited if you kind of said, we've got a special gift for you, and you open up the box and there's nothing in it. You know, they'd smile nicely and say thank you, but they'd be, oh, it's empty. We're not normally excited when something's empty. As I said, at Christmas, the, crate, the manger is empty, and then we fill it with the gift of the baby Jesus. And so it's kind of funny that on this special day, we're actually excited because it's empty. Because it's empty because Jesus was raised from the dead. There is hope. There is good news. The story didn't end with the crucifixion. It was just the beginning of something new and something more wonderful so that we know that when we've made mistakes and we've done things we shouldn't have, God will forgive us, that the forgiveness is offered. When our loved ones have, have died and finished their earthly journeys, that empty grave means that we have a promise and a hope that our loved ones have a, have a heavenly home, so there's peace and there's hope and there's comfort. There's all kinds of really wonderful things that come with something empty, which is very unusual, but that's why it makes it extra special because nowhere else could you get an empty box and be excited. But we had an empty tomb and we are thrilled because it means that God kept promises and that there is hope and there is good news. So I think you guys are staying upstairs today because some of you are going to sing like angels in a few minutes after the sermon. And it's good to see you here too. So perfect. So if you guys would like to go back to your seats, and, and today we get to be excited because it's an empty gift. It's an empty gift, but it's actually a very full gift. Would you please join with me as we offer the prayer for today? Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading, please. A reading from the book of Acts. Then Peter began to speak to the Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. 
But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to all of us who were chosen by God as witness and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. We offer a portion of Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Holy and mighty God, your son's triumph over sin and death has opened to us the gate of eternal life. Purify our hearts that we may follow where he has gone and share in the radiance of his glory. We ask this for the sake of our risen Lord. Amen. Our second reading, please. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you Hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Would you please be seated? I find um, Holy Week to be a hard week. And not just because there's a lot of details to attend to or a lot of services to keep track of. It's not the busyness, but it's the emotional roller coaster and the emotional ride that we take as part of Holy Week. We start on Sunday with Palm Sunday. So there's hosannas and hallelujahs and save us. And Jesus is welcomed into a town into town on a donkey. They throw their cloaks and their palm branches in front of them. And they are so full of hope and optimism and excited that their, their Messiah, the one who will save them, has come into town. And they welcome him with open arms. But as we move through the week, the story changes. And the, the hope and the expectation and the celebration of Palm Sunday turns into something else. On Monday, Thursday, Jesus has a quiet Passover supper with his friends. And even that doesn't go quite the way the disciples would have imagined. Because just after they gather and before they start the meal, Jesus takes off his cloak, puts a towel around his waist, and washes their feet. Not what they were expecting, not what was traditional, Usually that was done by a servant in the household. You walked around with sandals. Your feet were dirty, and it was a sign of welcome and hospitality to kind of freshen folks up. And their teacher did that for them. And he was trying to explain why he was doing it, what he was trying to show them, and they were kind of confused, kind of let him do it, but kind of confused about the whole thing. And then the meal happens, and Jesus took one of the loaves of bread on the table, set a blessing on it, and gave it to them and said, every time you gather and eat bread, you do it in remembrance of me. Not the normal prayers or traditions that would have happened at that meal. And then at the end of the meal, the cup that was passed around, he did something very similar. He blessed it and sent it around to all of them and told them that every time they drink this, it's a symbol of the new covenant that they have with God. And they do it to remember Jesus. This was a very strange evening and not quite what the disciples were expecting when they gathered in that room with Jesus, like they had done before and had celebrated many festivals with him before. But things were very different 
He also told them one of them would betray them. I think they all probably just skipped over that part. There was enough confusing things happening. And after dinner, they went to the garden to pray. They were having trouble asleep, staying awake. They kept falling asleep. Jesus seemed to be getting quite anxious and was berating them for having done that. Can you not just stay awake for just a little while to wait with me? And then a crowd starts coming to the garden. And Judas, in fact, does betray Jesus with a kiss, comes up and kisses him on the cheek, and the soldiers from the temple arrest Jesus and drag him off to be placed on a, tri in tri on a trial. They've been, and they weren't real charges. They were made-up charges. In fact, one of our, the gospel reading that we heard last week, they are having troubles because nobody's stories about what he'd done wrong matched up. He was turned over to Pilate, and even though Pilate says, I don't see any, he's not done anything. But the crowds insisted, and so their friend was captured and taken away and convicted <clears> on <throat> false charges and was sentenced to death. Confusion and fear, they, they abandoned him. I think they were, they were partially afraid. They weren't sure what was going on. They were afraid they might have been caught up in part of it as well, I'm sure. And just didn't know how things had gone so horribly wrong so very quickly. So they kind of run away and they watch from a distance. And Peter, I missed her. I'm never going to deny you. Even if I die with you, I will never deny you. Before the cock crowed that day, Jesus, Peter had denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. So we start with celebration and adoration and excitement and hope, and then all of a sudden, this strange meal with the things that Jesus did, and then he's arrested, and there's charges, and people run in fear, and they deny him, and then he's crucified, painfully, humiliatingly, publicly crucified. And he dies very suddenly. Part of the crucifixion is it would often take days. And he died very quickly. And so he was placed in a new tomb. Confusion and fear and uncertainty and disbelief and grief were filled with everyone's hearts. And the only thing left to do was for the women to take the spices the last thing they could do, they knew what to do, was to go and prepare the body for burial, to give it its last final ritual, its last dignity, after the indignity of everything it had been through. It was the only thing left that they knew what they could do. And they go first thing in the morning after the Sabbath, first thing in the morning, worrying about how they're going to get the stone out of the way so that they could do the one last thing that made sense to them, the one thing they had any control over, any understanding about what they could do, was the only thing left they could do. But it wasn't finished, because when they got there, not only was the tomb rolled away, but the body was gone. I wonder what would have been going through their minds because it probably felt like it was just the final indignity, that first thought, the body's gone, it was just the last of many indignities. And what could have happened? There must have been just shock and more fear and more confusion. And then they notice that there's someone standing in the tomb and they tell them, why are you here looking for Jesus? He's gone. He's not here, he's been raised. What they thought was the last thing that they could do, the last ritual, the last care they could give for their friend was snatched away from them because everything that he had explained to him and tried to prepare for them for was coming true, was being realized. It is no wonder they fled in both fear and astonishment and didn't say anything for a bit. It had been a hard enough week, and then on top of it, this news. Joy, excitement, hope, confusion, fear, pain, helplessness, grief. And then confusion and astonishment 
And I could imagine they needed to just process that news a little bit because it was too good to be true. After everything they had been through, everything they had experienced, it wasn't the end of the story. It wasn't the end. But there was still more. You know, the young man tells him, go, go on ahead. You know, Jesus is going ahead. He's going to meet you there. News that almost seemed too good to be true. News that seemed almost too impossible to believe, even though Jesus, all the way through Mark's gospel, kept explaining and re-explaining. Because one of the themes in Mark's gospel is the disciples, we know the secret that Jesus is the Messiah, but the disciples don't quite understand. They don't quite get it. So there's lots of stories about Jesus preaching to the crowds and explaining it to the disciples. Preaching to the crowds, telling parables, telling stories, and then explaining it to the disciples. Trying to prepare them for what was to come. Trying to get them to understand who he was as the Messiah. That it wasn't what they were hoping for and wasn't what they were expecting. But it was the Messiah they needed. It was the Messiah that God had sent into a broken and hurting world. It was the Messiah they needed. And so they had walked with him and had taught, had heard him teach them and heard him explain things and had encountered all these amazing things. And then just when they think somehow the story has ended in a way they couldn't have expected, the women discover there's more to the story. There is more to understand that evil hasn't won the day, that everything that they had watched wasn't somehow the end, but was getting ready for the next part of the journey. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to hear stories of the disciples encountering Jesus. Next week, we're going to talk about poor Thomas and him not believing until he can see for himself. We're going to hear of encounters that people have with Jesus and their hearts starting to open up and realize that what they thought was a horrible ending to their experience and a disastrous end to, to what God had sent them into the world was in fact just the beginning. And that there was more to come. And how wonderful for us to know that we are part of the continuation of that story. We have an advantage over the disciples in that we know how the story ends. So we can experience the ups, the downs, the twists, the turns, the emotional roller coaster of Holy Week because we know that there is something more wonderful on the other side. We know that the empty tomb is the fulfillment of all the promises that God made, is the the fulfillment of all the the preparation and the promises that Jesus explained to them. This was what was foretold. This is what was said. This is what's going to happen. And so we get to know that this story includes us. Like part of what happens and the story continues is that we are part of that story. We are part of the continuation of that story. That we get to hear and see the example that Jesus gave. And just like the disciples We get to take that story and live the next portion of it. We get to reflect the love. We get to to move forward with confidence in knowing that our sins have been forgiven. We get to move forward with confidence in knowing that when our earthly journey is done, there is a heavenly home. And there is comfort that we can take when we have lost loved ones, knowing that they are in a place of no pain and no suffering. They are in a place of love and that we will be reunited with them. We have the confidence in knowing that all the things that Jesus is going to tell the disciples over the next couple of weeks are also being told to us. To live fully. To share the good news. To reflect the good news that we have. To reflect the love that is in our hearts that we know that God has for us. We're part of the continuation of this story. It's an empty tomb but it is filled with the promise and the potential and the hope and the good news and the love. And that's why we're excited that it's uh, it's empty because the story isn't over. It It is just beginning. And it continues on over the generations and over the decades and over the centuries. And, and we get to play our part in this story and then there'll be others afterwards who get to who get their turn to live this out. 
to hear the good news, to, to have hearts that, that get to accept this good news. And that we are a people of hope, we are a people of faith because we are part of this Easter story. Like the women who gathered, we get to hear, he is not here, he is raised. He's going ahead to meet you. We get to be convinced, just like the disciples do over the next couple of weeks, about how the power of God is, conquers everything. And that there is hope and there is strength to be drawn from that. There is good news to be shared. And the best part is, is that we're part, of the, we're, we're part of the story. We're the ones that Jesus is going on ahead to meet you. He'll you know, catch up to him there. We get to do that too. By telling the story, by living faithfully, by sharing the good news, by reflecting what we believe in our hearts, we reflect it in the world around us, in the people that we encounter, in the choices that we make, in the way we live our lives. The good news isn't just that the Easter tomb is empty, but that we get to be part of that story living on. We get to be part of that story that continues, of that love that continues to be reflected in the, the hope and the good news and the strength in being a follower of Christ. We get to be part of that story. And we get to tell others and we get to invite them along so that they understand the story that we are a part of and that they can become a part of it too. The Easter story isn't just a single event, a moment in time. It is the continuation of a story of love, of God's love for us, of God's love for the world. It's a continuation of the story that we get to be a part of and then we pass it along and we share it and we tell it and we live it. So that the good news of Easter isn't just something we celebrate today and for the next couple of weeks until Pentecost. But it's a story we get to live, fully embrace, and tell each and every day of our lives. So on this Sunday, when we get to proclaim such a wonderful message, Alleluia, Christ is risen, we get to hear it with fresh ears and open hearts. And to know that we are part of that story, and it's our job and our responsibility and our joy to continue to celebrate it and continue to share it. Amen. We're now going to share a little something that we've been working on. I hope you enjoy it.
Special thanks also to Jen, who was so patient with everyone's schedules trying to get us all together to learn that. <laughs> well done, everybody. I invite you to stand as you are able. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, our Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continue with our prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world, God of grace. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace. Merciful God, we pray for all the peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. Praying today for Al, Shona, Jeff, Sean, and Suzanne, God of grace. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith at St. John's and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death especially our beloved ones the memorial flowers and candles were given in memory of. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, 
through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Join with me as we offer a prayer for peace in the Holy Land. O God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain and trauma of violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those who need you in these days of suffering. We pray for people of all faiths, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, and for all people of the land. While we pray to you, O Lord, for an end to violence and the establishment of peace, We also call for you to bring justice and equity to the peoples. Guide us into your kingdom where all people are treated with dignity and honor as your children. For to all of us, you are our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christ is here in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds. Jesus is with us teaching, loving, leading, and feeding. Let us confess how we have overlooked the presence of the risen Christ and ignored the words he whispered in our hearts as we pray, saying, We become comfortable, joyous God with our lives, with our faith, with our friends and family. We are so comfortable that your gospel jars us with your hope for us. We know we should tell your story, but doesn't everyone who matters know it already? We could invite others to your table, but then we might have to share. We could welcome the strangers, but worry that they might feel so uneasy around so many unfamiliar faces. Forgive us, God. Walk with us so we can be companions to the lost. Welcome us so we can include the hopeless and the homeless. Love us so we can share that love with everyone we meet on our journey. As we follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, into life with you. God loves us so much. God will listen to our cries, our prayers, our hopes, and our dreams. God's promises are for all those who are right beside us, as well as those who live on on the other side of the world. We lift our hearts to God, giving thanks for the mercy that has been given to us. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Would you please be seated? There is so much for us to be thankful for um, on this joyous Easter Sunday. We think of the loved ones in whose memory the candles and the flowers have been given. We are so grateful for their faithfulness, for their love, and for the rest and peace they now enjoy in God's keeping. We thank God for the way we have been able to gather to worship this week through all the different stages of Holy Week, sometimes as a parish family here at St. John's and sometimes as part of a larger community of faith here in Thorold. There have been prayers lifted, there have been donations made, there have been, has, food has been shared and prepared. There are many ways that we have lived out the good news of Easter. 
and today, as well as the financial contributions and donations that have been made to sustain this ministry, we have so much to offer God as we offer our offertory hymn. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Singing a new song unto the Lord. There is much to offer on this Easter Sunday. Would you please stand? Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Singing a Join with me as we offer a prayer over all of the gifts we have to offer up to God today. God, our strength and salvation, receive all we offer you this day and grant that we who have confessed your name and received new life in baptism may live in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn as we sing.
O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath. And the psalmist cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us warm. O God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly, O God, our strength and our song. You show us a version of a tree, a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit to our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to sing. Lord, we died with you on the cross. We were buried in your tomb. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Folks are welcome to come forward and to receive bread or bread and wine. If you'd like to come up for a blessing or choose not to share in the cup, all you need to do is simply cross your arms in front of you as a cue to those who are serving. But everyone is welcome at, the God's, at God's table.
heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand.
fragrance ever sweet crown him the lord of love behold his hands and side rich wounds yet visible above in beauty Together, let us pray. God of life, bring us to the glory of the resurrection promised in this Easter sacrament. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Go out into the world rejoicing. Meet your Creator who awaits you there. Delight in the richness and diversity of the world Christ died to save. Live in the power of the Spirit that renews all things, and the blessing of the Creator God, the Eternal Father, the Risen Son, and the promised Holy Spirit bless you that you might be a blessing to others today and always. Amen. Thank you for worshiping, whether at home or here in person. It is always a delight when we get to offer our hallelujahs and to be able to worship and celebrate this most wondrous gift that God gave to the world. The flowers and the, um, the candles are to the glory of God and in loving memory of so many of our dear friends and fellow parishioners. There um, is a paper copy. I know it's a lot of names to go through when we're, we're sitting here, but there's also a paper copy of this at the back if you'd like to be able to take one home. But as I said, there are so many that we have uh, loved and uh, are missing at this season. Given that we have a service during Holy Week on Wednesday evenings, we couldn't meet for our last uh, conversation. And so this coming Wednesday, we will do our last chapter in our um, Lenten book. It's, it's been an interesting discussion, interesting readings. And if you, this isn't, it's a book on being disciples. And so if you're kind of curious about some of the stuff that we've been reading and talking about, a number of us have paper copies of the books that we would be more than delighted to share if you'd like to read through them um, yourself as well. And just to kind of see, it's an eclectic mix of essays um, and some interesting things to think about and try and interpret from uh, Rowan Williams. But there are, are copies as well if you'd like to borrow them and read those on your own time as well. So this Wednesday night is our final discussion. Raft is in need of a little bit of help. Um, they work with teens and they are looking for toiletries, um, feminine products, um, and containers like base cell containers, cottage cheese, yogurt containers, all of those things. They support some of our vulnerable young people and they're looking for a little help. We provide a meal um, once a month for them uh, that they can either eat in person or take home and they're asking for a little more help. So if there's, if you are collecting, if you've got some toiletries, if you wanna purchase some of those products that they're needing, please bring them in and we will make sure to pass them along. And if you have a 
plastic container collection at your house that needs to be purged or downsized a little bit, um, they would be quite delightful. Just make sure there's the same number of bottoms and lids <laughs> that come in. <laughs> That's always important. But as I said, it's an easy way for us to support a very important resource in our community. The first Saturday of the month from 10 until noon is a pickup, a chance to, to come in and purchase meat pies, um, frozen soups, pre-made soups and butter tarts as well. So that'll be coming up this Saturday from 10 until noon. There is a rental in the upper hall, so we're doing this out of the basement this time. So you can come on downstairs um, to pick up some of those treats and to, to let anyone know if they're interested, that's the best time to come and to pick some up to purchase. Community care. Um, I don't know if you follow community care on social media, but each week they post how many families, how many individuals they help, and how many new people have had to turn to their services. And the numbers are just heartbreaking. So as you're, you're grocery shopping, um, they always, anything you feed your family with or feed yourself, they need to help support people in our community. They often need um, full size, like full containers of juice for families or uh, drinking boxes so kids have things to take in their lunch. Um, protein, peanut butter, um, canned pastas, uh, canned hams, anything, as I said, protein is often a tricky source. Um, and they also need canned uh, pastas as well. So that's, they kind of let us know each week what they're starting to get low on. And as I said, if you're grocery shopping and you can pick up an extra few things to help them out, I know they will gratefully receive it. Just before, um, I hope you'll be able to stay. There's coffee and treats in the parish hall. But as well, um, this is a busy week and there are a lot of people who have worked very hard. And so thank you very much um, to John for kind of manning the audio and helping us with some of the little hiccups we've had this week because there's been some other hiccups behind the scenes as well. Um, thank you to Lisa for making sure all of the services that have been on the screen have gone smoothly. Jennifer, you have been a saint. I don't know why you don't have a sleeping bag here because every time I come here, you are here working hard. And I know everyone in the choir has appreciated your dedication and your patience and your teaching. I, it was wonderful and it's been a delight to work with you and I can't wait for the next little choir we can pull together. Um, but thank you for all the work that you've put in. There was also a, a, a crew yesterday. Um, thank you to Gail and Betsy who came in yesterday and kind of put everything back after we stripped everything out. Helped me place the flowers so that the lovely arrangements is theirs, not mine. <laughs> Their work. But, um, and the people who've offered hospitality, who've welcomed people in. We hosted the Good Friday service, the Community Good Friday service on Friday. Obviously on Friday. And... Um, and offered the hospitality for that as well. And what a wonderful, wonderful way for us to gather as a community of faith to mark such a solemn occasion. It was quite a day, quite a day. So thank you to everybody who has worked so hard to help make everything go so smoothly, volunteering to do readings, volunteering to participate, offering hospitality, helping with everything. It's many hands pitching in, makes the, makes the work a little lighter and a little more joy-filled. So thank you to everybody. Now, I understand that there is a special treat for the, is it the big kids or the little kids? For the kids. So, are there any instructions? Because I noticed this has popped up. Oh, the kids want to grab their coats on. There is a fun activity outside. There's a couple of baskets, and I see two helpers at the back with bunny ears on. So, I bet you can put two and two together and figure out what's coming next after church. Oh, come on. Come on. You can go. So, anyway, so thank you again for all of your hard work. Please make sure you take your bulletins home for any upcoming announcements. And, and as I said, there, are, there is a paper copy of all the um, memorial flowers and the names of everyone we have uh, loved and who's... The donations have been made in their name for these flowers and candles. I hope you'll be able to stay for a little visit afterwards. And now we're going to stand and sing our final hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Christ the Lord is risen today. Heaven. 
heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done, Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won, Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him. Alleluia, Christ has opened paradise, Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where, O oh, death, is now thy sting, so distracted by the the egg hunt I forgot to mention that next Sunday is our holy humor Sunday so it's a way for us to continue the celebration of the good news and the joy of the resurrection so I invite you to come and to wear your bright colors your Hawaiian shirts your bold colors um, thank you to people who've been sending jokes to me but I just some of them I have enjoyed but just a reminder that this is an all ages event. And so some of the jokes I have enjoyed myself, but as I said, if you've got some jokes you'd like to send me to be part of the celebration, you're more than welcome to do that. But as I said, uh, next Sunday, we will continue to celebrate the resurrection as we celebrate Holy Humor Sunday. Go in peace to love and serve the risen Lord, alleluia. <laughs>